Look at all that sludge oozing out from under the valve cover. Burning a little bit too. She's smoking. And it stinks. I think it's time this toad gets a valve cover gasket. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Got another Toad video coming at you. This Toad XJ has been smoking a little bit. Not sure if you could see it in that little intro I filmed, but this valve cover, this whole area is uh, pretty grimy. It's probably, I don't know, at least 20 years old since it had a fresh valve cover gasket and all that oil is starting to ooze out. All that fresh oil I just put in and it's uh, getting on that exhaust header and it's smoking. Okay. So today on the project, we are going to install a brand new Fell Pro valve cover gasket. And while we're at it, we're going to put on a freshly painted 4.0 valve cover. That looks nice. So yeah, let's open this up and see what we got. All right, just peeled my tape back and boom, here we go. Beautiful, nice new Fell Pro valve cover gasket and it also comes with these little grommets these little seals seal where the bolts go right in these little holes I think there's like 15 of them we'll count later so to put on a valve cover gasket pretty simple you just got to take off the valve cover and to do that we're going to disconnect a few hoses actually probably don't even have to but I'm going to do it so you guys can get a good view this is a heater core hose comes out of the thermostat area and then you have another heater core hose that attaches to the water inlet tube. And I might even take off this bigger upper radiator hose. Get everything out of the way. And this side of the engine is pretty simple as well. You got your crank case ventilation tube. It goes into your air box. You got another ventilation tube that goes right into the intake. Make sure these aren't busted because these could cause a vacuum leak, FYI. And then we're just going to detach the throttle cable and cruise control and a transmission kickdown cable. All right, I might as well just start with these guys since I'm here. Ugh, nasty. Uh, these will probably break on you because they are very brittle and plastic. And I'll show you how to fix those in a minute because I got more parts. So we're just going to move that over there. Again, very brittle. Could break, but it's okay. I'll give you a link for these new parts. Just move this aside. These are very prone to breaking, so be gentle. You know what? <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. See if I can master this one-handed. Why not? I'm already dirty, right? Oh, my finger slipped off the record button. I may have shut you off. I'm sorry. Flop that over. Oh, still attached. My bad. Got excited. There you go, easy peasy. All right, gonna take off the factory hose clamps. Leaking a little bit, it's all good. Tuck this away. Don't mind the coolant and the steam. She is hot, because I was just operating her. <laughs> Here's some more. Probably should Wait till it cools a little bit. The last one on the water inlet tube. Oh, this thing's a little rusty. Got a lot more access to the valve cover. You can see all this goo and schmoo inside this little crevice. That's definitely uh, smokable material and doesn't smell that great either. So now I think the only other thing I'm gonna remove is the plug for this water temperature sensor. And I'm gonna gently slide up this wire loom cover. This is very brittle. As you can see, there's already a crack in it. I'm gonna do my best to prevent any further cracking. It just slides on the head bolts. So careful when you tug. And there we go. That should give us a little bit more room. And I guess we could pull up this, uh, <laughs> this really cheap 
crappy fix of a heat soak issue. Well, whatever. Thank you, Jeep, for your clever factory recalls, or whatever the heck that is. Oh, look at all that junk down there. Nasty. You know what? Just getting rid of this thing. It's gross. Say goodbye. All right, next up we got about 15. I'm pretty sure we'll count later. And I think 15. These are 11 millimeter bolts. Some of them have extra studs up top. They are for hanging accessories like this hose holder. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, got my magnet bowl and I got my 11 millimeter on a quarter inch drive with a little extension. Now you could take these off with a tool with power, but I wouldn't recommend putting them back on with a tool of power because you don't want to strip these bolts. Oh my goodness, this was loose as all heck. And the last one way in the back, you're probably going to need a little universal for it. So we're going to go ahead and apply our universal and then we'll be able to reach back there. If anything, you'd think it'd be a longer stud for better access. All right, gonna lift up the valve cover as gently as possible. I don't wanna knock any of this crud into the engine on top of the head, so uh, this is very loose. Put up no fight whatsoever. And up and over, no crud. There we go. All right, looky here, guys. Look at all that grossness, all this oily schmoo, this obscene nastiness. What is this? This is disgusting. Trust me, I did not put this here for effect. It really is that gross. No wonder why the toad was smoking all grossness and stinking. We got to remove all of these. All right, let's settle the score right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, yeah, 15 of these grommets. We gotta pop these guys out, like so. Oh, look at that. This one came out nicely. Uh, usually, the rubber comes out with it, like this one. You're gonna have to take all 15 of these guys, and you're gonna have to pry out the rubber grommet from the metal part, there we go. These are usually very, very brittle, and they break easily, but uh, this isn't breaking on me, so bad for demonstration purposes. But anyway, these guys, you wanna clean these up, because you're gonna need all 15 of these with new grommets when you reinstall the cover. That's what I was talking about when I mentioned them being brittle. There we go. Thank you for the demonstration. Ooh, another one. Look at that. All right, I highly recommend soaking all these things in some degreaser, maybe a wire wheel or a tumbler if you have it. Get these nice and clean. So we'll set these aside for now. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to remove your oil cap. You want to gently take off these brittle plastic cable holders. Some on each side. Set these aside as well. All right, this valve cover is pretty solid steel. You could reuse this right now if you wanted. I would never do that because it's gross. <laughs> so I usually end up cleaning them and painting them. If you don't want to clean it and paint it and you want to put this right back on, just go ahead and skip this next step. Just make sure that the other half of your 
little grommets are out of here. See how some of them are stuck in and some are out. So pop all the grommets out before you put in the new ones. What I did was I removed these guys, your CCV tubes, uh, the little vents, and I got a new set to put in. So if you want to see how to remove them, I'll show you right now. They are extremely brittle when they're hot and this piece of rubber gets solidified like plastic. So what usually happens is they get sacrificed, they get, uh, they get destroyed and we replace them. So not a big deal. Of course, I'm gonna try to extract it as gently as possible. What you don't wanna do is pry on the nozzle because they'll snap right off. You usually gotta get screwdrivers in there and pry up together. That's how to save them. But for a couple bucks on Amazon, you just get new ones but let's uh let's see what we could do let's demonstrate some carnage for you here we go on my garbage can workbench uh just gonna stuff a screwdriver in gently it's very hard rubber now so it's probably gonna crack and you want to work around the corners very gingerly I'm gonna try not to crack this little lip up here and you could do two screwdrivers in concert with each other. Maybe even a buddy with another two. Four screwdrivers together would be outstanding. But uh, I am not expecting this to survive. We got one out. Very good. And look at that. This brittle rubber cracked. Shocker, right? No surprise there. There we go. This is definitely trash, but if you're going to reorder these, you just might as well reorder these. This is a factory Mopar CCV tube. It is basically uh, hollow, like a pipe. <laughs> no resistance whatsoever. Now the one on the back, this has got the little valve in it. This also is a Mopar part. Still, let's air pass pretty freely, though. This one didn't come out so badly. It's a little more flexible, but still brittle, though. All right, now is the time you're gonna want to wire wheel this thing, clean it, and paint it. It actually helps if you get one in advance. This way, you could just swap it out like I did. So let me show you that. Here is my new painted, clean valve cover. I pour 15 this with black pour 15 caliper paint and it was kind of streaky so I went over it with my top coat as guess what my rust-oleum semi-gloss so that's the result it's not too bad and let's assemble this cover got the new CCV hardware I got this on Amazon of course I will leave a link in the description it's got these new rubber grommets look how soft and squishy they are nice They just pop right in. Now, we got the valve on the short one this time and the open tube on the tall one. Still very little resistance from either of them. I don't think it matters. The front one vents to the air box. The rear one goes right into the intake. So it shouldn't really matter what we do. Maybe we could think about putting a catch can on the rear one, since the rear one is going to be wide open now. Maybe we'll get a little oil vapor catched in there. Shouldn't be too bad, but yeah. Let's go ahead and reinstall this. The back one is taller because of the hood height coming down. That's why they're different sizes. But we're going to go ahead and pop this in. You could probably use a little WD-40, make it slide in a little better. What is this? This is half Windex, half rubbing alcohol. Let's see. This should work too. Any liquid will lube it nicely. There we go. 
right out to the passenger side. No, driver's side, yep. There. Loop this one up too. Very nice. Ta-da. And we could revisit our little cable holders. Clips right on. And a nice factory oil cap. I have an aftermarket one too. We'll go with the factory. All right, we got 15 new grommets. These came with the valve cover set where we're using our factory hardware. Look at these bad boys. This set I cleaned up earlier. This was soaking in degreaser, and then I tumbled them for a day. So they're ready to go, ready to be reassembled. Easy stuff, guys. You just slide the flat end in like so. And this end, with these little feet, they clip right into the valve cover. First, we have to take the, the bottom side. We're gonna insert them into the valve cover. They just pop in. There we go. Make sure these little feet come through. You'll know what's in because it doesn't fall out. And then you could reinsert your factory hardware and that holds them in place. So we're gonna go ahead and do that 14 more times. <laughs> All right, all my grommets are in. All right, we're back to the Jeep. So what we're gonna do next is remove the old valve cover gasket. And basically, the rule of thumb. Rule of thumb? Rule of thumb is never drop anything into this engine. So we're gonna follow suit, like what we did with the valve cover itself, and try to not knock any crud or grime into this bad boy. And there we go. Got some brake clean and a microfiber cloth, and I'm gonna gently wipe away any of this schmoo and junk off of this valve cover gasket area. Again, don't push it into the engine, move it away from the engine. And I'm using microfiber, because I don't wanna use paper towel, which may get a bunch of lint and crap in there. So, I'm not spraying it right in the engine. Just a little nice wet spot. And we're gonna just wipe it away. Wipe it away. Rotate the spot, get some fresh cloth, and wipe away. Also, try not to push any junk into your threads. Don't want to do that either. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around until it's all clean. I highly recommend this after the schmoo has been cleaned up. You could go full Dan H and scrape off all of this residue from the previous gasket. But when this is off, you're going to get such a much better seal. It's going to be great. Hey, check it out, guys. I think I out dan h myself. I went after this whole rim with the wire wheel. And it came out really nice. Even got in here, and I cleaned up the casting number. Ooh, look at that. 0331, the notorious XJ head that is bad. Okay. Uh, here it is. It is not a tuppy. This is a straight up 0331, the worst head ever made. So this should be a ticking time bomb. It's 200,000 miles. It's still going strong. Hopefully we won't have to replace this head, but hey, if we do, it'll be another Dan H video. So this surface is really, really nice now, and we could go ahead and put in our new gasket and pop the valve cover on. All right, new gasket time. It's gonna go on the exact same way the old one came off. We're just gonna lay this baby down. And remember these little holes right here in this brace, they are to fit right over the head bolts. So lay that on there nice. Tuck this head bolt in as well. And we are good to go. Make sure everything's flat back there. Resting nicely. Beautiful, nice and clean, new gasket. All right, I laid this bad boy down <laughs> on this plastic and popped some of these grommets out. 
I guess they don't really lock in place that well. So I'm gonna use the tripod and get this on nice and neat. All right, here we go. All the grommets are in, and we're just gonna lay this down here. Hopefully it falls into place just as easy as it came out. Boink. That's the sound of success. So just for the record, right down there, we have a ground strap on a head stud locked in place with that big nut. That is the only obstacle, the only place of interference. So just be mindful of that. Don't start tightening your screws till you're sure you clear that area. But all these holes are lined up very nice. Now we could get our hardware, which I just have labeled laying around for me. Let's see, what do we got in the bag? 4.0 valve cover. Huh. Oh my my, isn't that convenient? <laughs> How nice. So these dirty bolts are gonna go in the tumbler and the new bolts are gonna go in the Jeep. All right, right now it's just a matter of putting the bolts back where they go. It really doesn't matter. The only thing that does matter is basically if you have accessories like this, you're gonna want to put this stud back where this is supposed to hold the hoses. So, you know, that's gonna go on there. We'll get to that in a minute, but I would just put this one right here. And for simple appearance purposes only, i rather just put the long studs towards the rear so you don't really see them. And we'll keep the short ones up front because they look a little better. All right, for the back one, once again, I'm gonna use a longer bolt just because it's easier to hold on to. And well, you could line up your sockets better when you have something to, to accept it, to receive it. It's a better receiving bolt. Don't want to drop it on top of the transmission. That would totally suck. But I got extra bolts, so that's always nice. But you might not have extras, so be careful not to drop them down there. All right, we're just about done with this install. I hand threaded every single one of these guys in to make sure that the threads weren't cross threaded. And I got these nice and snug by hand. Now we could reuse this, but uh, your power tools, something like this, throw that away. We are going to switch to this. Now what we have to do is torque every single one of these bad boys down to 85 inch pounds not foot pounds. See this little guy? It's only a quarter inch drive. Inch pounds, not foot pounds, right? Uh, it's kind of thin steel and you don't want to warp it as you go around. So again, 85 inch pounds and there's a pattern to this to keep it from warping. We're gonna start out with bolt number one. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth in a swirly type pattern and we'll get this thing nice and torqued. All right, they're all on, except the one in the back. Don't forget to torque this guy. Look at that, ha! Lines right up. Now that we have a longer stud, much better. We'll save the best for last. There we go, check that out guys. Looking pretty good. Now we just gotta reassemble this bad boy. Alright, the very last thing I wanted to show you was this hose holder. This guy slides onto that stud 
and it holds the hoses in place to the heater core. But just about every 4.0 I've ever seen has this thing flopping around because the bottom part that grips on the threads usually separates from this guy. So what I'm going to do off camera, maybe even tomorrow, is clean this out. It's got a nice little metal shaft in there. I'm going to clean it out and I'm going to re-glue this piece into here. And then it's going to sit nicely on that stud, nice and strong. It's going to hold in those heater core hoses. So that's it. Another little simple fix. Don't lose these guys. It's probably stuck on that stud. Now you can save it and fix it. Well, all right, guys. There you have it. Valve cover gasket is in. New valve cover is on. And everything's buttoned up really nice. Sorry about the lighting. It's, uh, it's night. It's night? Yeah, so days are getting shorter. It's getting a little chilly out. Should probably be wearing a sweatshirt, but... I'm going in now, so it's all right. But yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, pretty simple job. Only took me a couple hours. It's probably twice the time it should have taken. Should go really quickly because, uh, you know, I'm filming and that always takes up some time. But if you want to make this job go super duper easy, what you could do is go to the junkyard, get yourself a valve cover, and get all your hardware. You could clean up your hardware. You could paint the new valve cover. This way, when you're ready to do the job, just a simple swap you pop on your prepared and painted parts and it'll go really easy so that's it man pretty sweet it looks great shouldn't be smoking and steaming anymore xj's have three major leak problems the valve cover the rear main seal and the oil filter adapter seal so i'm going top to bottom cleaning all this stuff up hopefully we'll have a leak free xj no more oil burning and smoking and smell bads it's gonna be great so thanks for watching another toad episode guys remember to like and subscribe i'll catch you guys on the next project peace if you opened up your cooling system like i did make sure you give yourself a good burping when you're done